The next speaker is my uh, colleague in vascular surgery, uh, Jing Li, who is associate professor of surgery within the division of uh, vascular surgery. Uh, welcome, Jing. And Jing is going to talk to us about novel techniques for the patient with limited options for hemodialysis access. Thank you, Willie. Um, <coughs> I'm going to start off by, uh, we're going to shift gears here a little bit and talk about hemodialysis access. It's an area of uh, increasing uh, area of practice for me. I have no disclosures. Let's start off with a case study. Anyone who does any serious uh, uh, access uh, surgery uh, has a typical patient like this who's, in my case, it's a 53-year-old man who had focal sclerosis and glomerular sclerosis, and he was recommended long-term access. And this all saga started in October of 07 when I started left Semino. And uh, 10 procedures later, I still don't have an adequate access. Uh, by the way, it's not me. He's gone to several different surgeons, too, by the way. <laughs> so I just want to let you know that uh, I'm not the only one having trouble. Um, and he's come back to me, ultimately. And uh, <clears throat> he's had multiple thrombectomy procedures. And every hospital in the region has come to know him very well. And he's also had multiple catheters, uh, including tunnel dialysis catheter. And subsequently, he's gone on to occlude his right internal jugular vein. So now what do I do for this man? He's fairly young, 53. What's my next procedure? Well, I called around the region because I went to a, a recent CETA meeting, uh, Controversies in Dialysis Access, and there was this hero catheter. So I started calling around the region asking if anyone had any experience. And actually, I didn't find anybody. Um, so I had to call the company itself. And I had one scheduled. <clears throat> And they claim and they, they, they figure that we should put the hero catheter somewhere between uh, AV graft in the upper extremities before we start putting AV grafts in the lower extremities. So it should be an intervening step. And I'm going to go through a couple of things. I'm going to go over the procedural steps and some of the data that has accumulated as to why this should be. And I, I would wholeheartedly agree with this algorithm. So to start, um, it's basically a combination procedure, so you need to kind of have a setup in your own medical center whether who does the access surgery, is it kind of divided between the surgeons and the interventional radiologists, um, meaning do you put in your own permacatheters or does the interventional radiologist, because this is kind of a combination procedure. What essentially the concept is, is there's no venous anastomosis, um, and as anyone who does access surgery, 90% or vast majority of the access failures are at the venous anastomosis. So when you're looking, when you're looking at this, um, you see that this is the actual catheter. It's kind of like a catheter here. So I'll start off with a, an IJ stick, put a wire down. My next incision will be in, in a delta pectoral groove. I'll make a small incision. I'll pass the wire, and I'll bring the catheter out here, and I'll put a clamp right here. And then what I'll do is I'll, there's a connecting component, which you screw this together. And I'll tunnel it underneath, and I'll make another incision somewhere in the brachial artery, and my last step will be the brachial artery anastomosis. There are several specific inclusions and exclusions. My main thing that I've found very beneficial, and I'm sure a lot of you have noticed this, is patients who have central vein occlusion or stenosis. They don't have any other option in the upper extremity. And because of this, they've been recommended with a femoral graft. And in fact, I've had three or four different patients come to me and say, Doc, I want a femoral graft. And I'll come out and I'll talk to them about the options of the central vein occlusion and the uh, issues of the hero catheter. Some of the clear exclusions that I just want to make sure that people are aware of is that, that you need to have a brachial artery that's three millimeters or greater. There's no arterial insufficiency. And the other thing is that they, they're not consistently hypotensive because there's no short segment. It's a long tube that you've got to pump blood through that, that they need to have a reasonable uh, uh, blood pressure. And that's not really a problem in our end stage renal failure patients. So many of you have already seen this kind of scenario where you've got just absolute central vein occlusion and they are approaching catheter dependency. And you see here there's a catheter. Again, as I was mentioning, it's uh, th uh, three incisions. Uh, you need one venotomy, uh, one, at, uh, one here, one at uh, delta pectoral groove, and one at the arterial anastomosis. So I'm going to start off with just some more uh, detailed steps. First, you need to establish access to the right atrium. Typically, these patients already have a catheter sitting in the right atrium. And please, I would not remove the catheter because sometimes once you remove the catheter, you've now gone on to occlude that central vein. So if it's functioning poorly and they need an exchange, I generally start off with a duplex. And you'll start seeing some, uh, some um, uh, waveforms that are consistent with a central vein occlusion. What I'll then do is I'll put a wire down using the, um, using the previously placed catheter uh, prior, uh, uh, once I get into the operating room through the permacatheter. 
I'll feed this wire and I'll, I'll get access to the right femoral vein and I'll snare that, vein, uh, that wire so now you've got a body floss from the neck down into the groin. Since it was my first time, I wanted him asleep, so he underwent general anesthesia. And s since then, you can probably do it under local, but uh, I, I started off my first case with a general anesthesia, and you can see here the wire. Uh, this is from his previously placed catheter, and it goes straight through his heart, down into the IVC, and it's coming out uh, through his right groin. I, I used a 260 implants wire. And actually, when I did the venogram, I noticed that he did have a, a central vein stenosis here, which I went ahead and um, placed an 11 by 5 uh, Viabon uh, stent, and I subsequently, subsequently ballooned that, and through which I went ahead and placed this, uh, the stent portion of the hero catheter. So through that, I, I placed the stent portion, went that down into the uh, um, heart, and I tunneled the graft in a standard manner and connected the graft, and there's a crimping tool to keep, uh, so that blood doesn't keep pouring out of this uh, thing while you're, you're doing the next part of it. Then you create the arterial anastomosis in a standard manner. And the key thing is, is uh, there's, it's a nice little connecting uh, section, and I, I just warn you that once you do this, um, you can't take it apart, so there's no trial run. So once you put it together, you're, you're kind of committed. Now, the next thing is, is you need to, it's just like any other dialysis graft, you need to let this uh, heal in for about two weeks, so you do need to put in the femoral vein catheter, so that's where through, uh, through the body floss technique, I put in another, uh, the, the uh, dialysis uh, permacatheter in the groin plant with clear plants to remove that in two to four weeks so that we can start using the, the hero catheter. Let's talk about the overall in outcome. So I talked to you about how, how you implant this. Um, what are the infection rates compared to what's the standard out, out there for now? The patency rates and what are the re-intervention rates? These are the three main uh, uh, points that I review in evaluating dialysis access graphs. So you can see <clears throat> the key thing that I wanted to show you is that when you, this is the, the clinical trial that I have. It was uh, published in the Journal of Vascular Surgery in 2009, and the main uh, catheter infection time was due to the femoral catheter at 2.3 uh, events for 1,000 days. Once you take that catheter out, it drops to zero. So the overall hero catheter infection rate or bacteremia rate is 0.7 percent, which is actually pretty good. So again, and it's all related to the uh, bridging dialysis catheter. If you look at the uh, uh, patency rate, the patency rate is pretty poor, 36%. Um, but this is not much different than the 42% in the graph literature. And anyone, again, who does dialysis access knows that th these are pretty typical dismal results that we all share. Uh, secondary patency is about 84%. And it's not bad secondary patency at 70%. So it's comparable to what's out there for the graph literature. Now, if you were to put it all together, um, the other factors that uh, the nephrologists look at is the adequacy of dialysis, the KTV. And uh, the DOKI guidelines are that you want this uh, KTV to be greater than 1.4. And the hero catheter has, does a pretty good job at 1.7. The overall intervention numbers is 2.5, which is uh, better than the tunnel dialysis catheters, but better than the fistulas and the graft. And the overall secondary patency is very competitive, 78% at one year. Now, this is just for um, those people who do this in practice. I just wanted to put CPT codes in your syllabus just in case you get to code for the AV fistula component and uh, two tunnel dialysis catheter components because you are putting the, the uh, catheter portion in the upper, extrem uh, the upper veins and the fem typical the femoral catheter in the, uh, down below. So you can code for three, three items here. So in summary, um, the typical patient who will undergo a hero catheter has had an average of 5.4 procedures. The clinical and economic outcomes uh, are, are pretty good uh, because it's all subcutaneous uh, and it's a reduced risk of uh, access-related bacteremia. The patency is actually very, very acceptable in my, in my mind, and if you can decrease the, uh, decrease the infection rate, increase the patency rates, you can overall improve catheter-related hospitalizations and decrease number of interventions. Thank you. Thank you, Jane.